So, so far we've demonstrated that you can have three different kinds of backhands and then how to use the targets for aiming points. But how do you get good at this? How do you practice your shot enough that you can get where you can aim the shots where you want them to go? That's what we're going to show you next. So let's address some of the things that I can do that help me with fours, not only hitting the ball to the right spot, but maybe the speed I want to hit it at. So as a coach, I'll tell my players, let's practice hitting at three speeds. Level one is a slow, loopy, spinny ball, with either with underspin or topspin. It's the kind of shot people hate to hit against. If, for example, the ball comes in, I'll do a drop and hit, and just kind of hit a funky, loopy ball that no one likes to receive. Level two speed was so I could rally the ball. At this speed, I could hit a pretty aggressive shot without taking a lot of risk, but I could do 20 balls in a row. I could rally at a high level without making an error. Level three would be as hard as I can hit it without missing. And that's a really important part, so you don't not, not to overplay the speed, but hit your top speed. And you can't do this very often. Most of your shots are gonna be hit at level two speed. But you can change how you practice by changing hitting level one, level two, or level three. So how would I practice with two hands? Well, drop and hit's one of the best ways to practice, because you get the ball to put it where you want to hit it, and you can move to make your footwork as well. When you toss the ball, I would suggest tossing it with your right hand if you're, if you're a right-hander. Hold the racket with your left hand in your read position. Toss the ball up, because as you toss up, it allows you to find your grip and then execute your shot. In fact, if you'll notice, you do this all the time when you play a match, singles or doubles. You have to return the ball back to your opponent. That's a perfect time for you to practice. In fact, guess what? You'll hit 80 balls back to your opponent typically during a match, which means you have 80 chances during the match to practice your perfect drop and hit to groove your shot. I might do a one-handed backhand and typically I'd hold the racket by the throat, up in the read position, toss the ball, adjust my feet, release, and stay turned. In this case, I was hitting a level one shot. The other option would be, once again, to practice with a, a slicing ball. And what I can do is I can drop the ball lower or higher, so I don't have to practice the perfect ball. But I start my racket up in the read position again, toss the ball with the right hand. The reason I toss the right hand, it helps me learn how to use my left hand to set the racket, but also allows me to experiment with finding different grips. So if I have a hard time changing my grips, it's simply because my grip is already too tight. This allows me to find the correct grip. And because my racket's on the side, I'm more likely to find a level, a number one or level number two grip as I go for the shot. I toss it up, rack it up high, ball's lower, so I hit a slicing backhand. But I want to practice moving through the ball, not stopping as I hit. So in each of the demonstrations we've done so far, I've practiced doing a drop and hit. So in effect, I was practicing my backhand. Now let's take a look at some of the ways you can use using the little ball machine, which could be any ball machine. 